my neighbor named that one Foghorn, but um, I also, like, I, I named her Psycho Killer. Why? Um, that's just kind of my naming style with sheep. I don't know, I just feel like these sheep, like, they're not actually, like, that cute in terms of, like, their spirit, you know? Like, they think of themselves, I think, as much tougher. Like, that sheep is just not named Sprinkles or whatever it is that you want to name it. Like, that sheep is tough. Like, that sheep survived a mountain lion attack. She's the defender of the flock. Like, she's a killer. Sheep, sheep. Not you guys. <laughs> I think the overall mission of what I do with sheep is just kind of fitting them back into the landscape on a daily basis. It really changes with the season. So at this time of year, um, you know, there's fresh green grass growing and the ewes are very, very pregnant. In addition to grazing vineyards and in addition to, um, you know, grazing around people's homes for weed abatement, they're also doing um, fuels abatement all the sheep that I raise are Wissant sheep. This breed that I use is really good for that because they're a more primitive breed. Um, so a lot of the more domesticated sheep breeds will kind of only eat grass. Um, but this breed, they can graze grasses, they can graze different kinds of shrubs or vines or things like that that might uh, relate to, um, to fire fuel. The sheep do a really good job both at um, reducing that fuel load for that season, um, but they're also improving soil health while they're doing it because those grasses and plants and things are kind of going through this sort of like probiotic uh, fermentation chamber in the sheep's guts. And then it, you know, like comes out the back end as being this sort of like um, really nutritious, like soil enhancer. And then, you know, there's other benefits like the way the sheep graze the plants kind of like unevenly helps stimulate root growth. And so, you know, when you're using sheep, you're not just mowing the lawn, you're also um, sort of like preparing the garden bed for the following year. Where's your baby? Gotta find your baby. <laughs> I think as a sort of a first generation young rancher who's kind of working outside the box, I think I kind of necessarily fall into this sort of regenerative agriculture category, uh, which I have kind of complicated feelings about, honestly. You know, for me, like I have many friends that are working in agriculture that you know, the work that they do is regenerative and they come from, you know, families or cultures that have had these sort of different principles or practices. And those principles and those practices often come from, um, you know, like really old indigenous ancient cultures. And there's a, sometimes there's a sort of a whitewashing that happens that there's I think like this impression that sometimes is given of regenerative agriculture being this sort of like new thing that was just discovered by scientists. And it's like, you know, not giving credit where credit is due. And I think right now that's, that's something that the movement around regenerative agriculture is really lacking in. Wasant sheep are very seasonal breeders, um, like a lot of the more heritage breeds. So uh, they really, they decide when they're gonna breed. Uh, it tends to be between like late October through December. Um, and so that means that then um, we get lambs in March and April. Sheep in general are known for uh, having lambs, you know, kind of like in the early morning hours between like you know 2 to 4 a.m. typically when there's like some like heavy rainstorm 
you know, where like you really don't want to be out in it. And they're like, hmm, this is a good time to give birth. <laughs> and the, the reason being is that uh, the air pressure is really low and uh, that makes it easier for them to give birth. Um, but, you know, I've also seen them give birth at like, you know, 5 p.m. on like a sunny day. So it kind of varies. We lamb here at our home site um, in part because it's that much safer in terms of predators. The, the most pressure they have is um, kind of like from each other or from, um, you know, they use like the one-year-old ewes that didn't have a lamb this year. They're just kind of troublemakers. They like get in there and they like try to play with the lamb. They stress the moms out. Try to like they try to steal the lamb. The yearling ewes are like the cool aunt that tries to get the lamb to like go out and have adventures and play, be mischievous. <laughs> so at nighttime I tend to keep them separate. So the ones who are new moms all pen up in the barn here so that they can uh, just like have some bonding time with their lamb and not be bothered. It's very satisfying to see the relationship that grows between the mother and the baby and to see the lambs grow and develop and to see the lambs play with each other and have fun together. And I now can't really imagine not having lambs. That's just like part of springtime. Like what would I do with myself? I just have like a vacant hole inside of me or something. <laughs>